electric jet boards and e-foils are taking over the world. Today, we have our favorite guest, a legend of the industry, Dana Lundquist, a professional Moto Surf World Cup rider and one of the creators of the new electric e-wave jet board to talk to us about his new exciting jet board and e-foil. So hi Dana, welcome to the show. We had a nice interview with you a year ago in Portugal, but a lot changed since then. I know you improved the board a lot. So for people who never heard about e-wave, tell me just the basics, the speed, the running time, the weight, the charging time. Okay, is a high performance, motorized surfboard that E-Wave brought to the market for under $10,000. That was our primary mission. So the weight of the board is 45 pounds um, and the weight of the battery then is another 45 pounds. So when you have a high performance uh, electric product like we have or any other type of motorized surf, um, you have a big battery pack. So the weight is inherently built into that. It's not going to be as uh, light as a you know, regular surfboard, obviously. You've got the, uh, the motor in it and you've got the battery pack. So um, we anticipated the weight of the board. So we developed wheels that connect into the FCS spin boxes on the back of it. And we have the handles that you can see on the front of the board to make it easy for the consumer to m maneuver this board around. So uh, it goes about 35 miles an hour at full speed. It will last uh, 20 to 40 minutes and electric boards are heavily dependent on rider weight and weight of uh, uh, what they're pushing. So uh, the average is about 30 minutes, of course, depending on your weight. So 200 pounds is getting about 20 minutes. If you're about 110 pound, say a teenager, young person, um, you're getting about 40 minute ride time. All right, all right. But one of the coolest advantages of your board is the new dual system. So you can switch between the jet board and e-foil. So tell me more about this new system. That is correct. That's something we're really excited about. It was not an afterthought. Uh, E-Wave conceived this whole board, this whole product, not just as the core of the jet board that it is. It wanted to be a major uh, player in the jet board market, but it was preconceived to have this full attachment. So. Um, what you do is you literally just drop out the jet pump out of the bottom. There's a cavity where the jet pump fits in. I've got a sample of that jet pump right here. And so here's the jet pump uh, casing and you see the four screws. So literally you just four screws, you drop this out and the foil attachment is already built with the support system and structure to where it inserts in that cavity with those four screws. Obviously there's the three electrical plugs that will plug into the, um, into the hull for the power but it's literally four screws. You can drop it out and convert it from just a jet board to a foil board. So how hard is it to switch between two systems? Is it possible to like a switch between sessions on the same day? Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, it's literally, like I said, four screws um, and undo the three plugs and then you have your foil waiting there. You uh, screw those in and, and plug it in. So you can do both sessions at one time without a problem. Um, some people may wake up and look out at the water and say, yeah, is it flat? Do I want to go slide? Or, you know, <laughs> do I want to surf today? Do I want to, you know, if it's choppy, uh, put the foil on and go fly. Yeah, I think this is one of the main advantages of your product, actually. And how yeah. much does the e-foil mode increase the riding time? The foil will get an hour of riding time uh, so it, there's just obviously less drag with the foil. So when you're riding the whole uh, board skimming across the top of the water with the weight of that, then uh, ride time is diminished. But when you when you lift above the water and don't have that drag, it'll get you an hour of ride time. All right. So let's start with the experience of riding in a jet board mode. So I know you're a big fan of racing in the Moto Surf World Cup. So let's talk yeah. about E-Wave. Uh, like a race board. Of course, we cannot compare it to the petrol board and petrol board will be always faster But still it's pretty much close to the racing experience. So how was it for you? Well, the Electric jet board that we've developed the concept behind it was to provide a high performance when I mean high performance That means a performance board similar to the experience we we're getting out of petrol boards and so we were able to do that and um, the added weight 
has not finished the the carvability or maneuverability of the board. Uh, maybe there's some, but not as much as one might think. Um, we went through 14 hull designs to get this design uh, to be, uh, and so uh, we've accomplished that. So I might take exception, Mike. Um, we feel that, uh, you know, maybe electric could be competitive to petrol someday, you know, maybe not today, but, and, and uh, you know, this board is designed for the recreation market. So it's giving the, the experience and the performance of a, of a moto surf board, um, but in electric version. So we wanted to bring something that was reliable, user-friendly, easy to use to the recreation market. There was just that of uh, uh, that experience. And so that, that was our mission. So speaking of recreation market, uh, we tested Eve 8 a few months ago with my daughter Melissa and we had a yeah. nice tube in, in Wayne's place where he's renting on the board. So tell me more about the tube. Well, uh, interesting timing for this interview. I just had a daughter of mine uh, bring 10 people out to the lake, her uh, college buddies, this weekend, Saturday. And so she has experience riding boards with me, of course. And so we became the uh, instructors for a group of 10 uh, kids in their 20s. And uh, none of them ridden a jet board before. So we set up one board with the tube. And then we set up the other board without the tube. And me and her just stepping through like a, a training mill. So we got, got them on the tube, get them used to the throttle control first with the stability of the tube. And then we advanced them over to the, to the board without the tube, the regular board. And so we literally stepped them through this process and we were successful with 10 people getting them from the training tube uh, to riding the motosurf board. And so that moment is what what I live for. That, that's why I'm bringing this to the market, was to see that experience, to share this with uh, as many people as we possibly can. Yeah, the smile on the face is priceless. That, and, that's yeah, and I also saw your new video, you were riding with your dog, Lola. Yeah? How was it? Yeah, I think she's crashed out down there, but uh, yeah, yeah, she loves it. We went this weekend as well, and, and uh, when we unstrap her, I got a, like a papoose I strap her up with, and she goes and gets in it. And uh, when I set her down, her adrenaline is just, she's bouncing around like a, like a rabbit. <laughs> yeah, that was super fun. So let's get back to the e-foil riding. So I know you're a big fan of e-foils and before yeah. eBay, you've been riding e-foils from other brands for a long time. Yeah. So what's the difference of your experience riding traditional e-foils and this one with straps, with the handle, yeah, that, that's a good question. We didn't know what we were going to end up with. You know, we had conceived it uh, to have the uh, the foil attachment. And so in January, I was able to uh, test the first prototype of it. And um, so we have three points of contact on our board. We got the two foot pads and the uh, the handle. And so my experience has been just a, you know, board with no, no pads. Um, and so I, I love that. I didn't have any problems with that design but we wanted to see how this three point of contact design uh, changed the riding experience. So we thought, is it gonna be worse, no good? Is it at least comparable or is it better? We weren't sure. So my experience was, I was pleasantly surprised. The three points of contact gives you more uh, ability to control the foil and the mass uh, underneath the board. So having those three points of contact give, gave me more ability to, to carve that board and to uh, manipulate it and hold that foil or the mask uh, where you want it. So um, it's, it, it, it's, a, it's a success from that standpoint. So we're very happy with that. But then in addition to that, um, you can also remove the pads and put you know, Hydro Turf on top of the board and, and ride it as a straight full board as well. So uh, it depends, rider preference will have the option to, to choose however they want to do it. So. So just understand how you actually starting to foil. So you're starting on the surface, same like a jet board, and you put the, the legs in the straps, right? Before you start to foil. No, you just, you get up like your regular jet boarding uh, uh, mount in a sense. What's actually convenient with the handles that we put on the, on the board, um, not only for accessory mounts and all, but for foiling. Uh, when you foil, you need to get up on the nose of the board because that leverage of the mast is pushing that nose up. 
And so that handle allows you to get up on the front of the board, get your weight up, and then you, you get it going at a moderate speed, and then you just get your back foot in and foot. So you're really just riding on top of the water like you're jet boarding um, once you get that balanced position, and then you know you accelerate and it just lifts you right on up. So. And how was the difference of your experience riding e-foil on the flat water and e-foil during the surf? Um, the I both uh, the flat water is more uh, you have to worry just uh, you're paying attention or focusing on your horizontal balance in a sense because it's just flat and there's just really one dimension of your balance there. Uh, when you move it to the surf, it's more advanced. Your uh, your balance point is now vertical as well as horizontal. So it's uh, it's three dimensional balancing. And so really is number one is a good workout. Uh, number two, it adds more dimension to the foiling because you're actually rolling, moving the nose up and down and rolling and carving with the waves. Um, and I'm not talking about in surf break waves. I'm talking about in rolling waves, uh, maybe three foot waves where you literally just get to go and roll and, and uh, you know, just get connected to the surf, to the, to the vibe of the water flow. You really just dial in. So I like them both. Uh, surf, the surf riding is, is just more challenging. So it's more fun uh, to me. Uh, so personally, I like jet boarding on the flat water. I like foil boarding in the surf. And you know other brands are offering different kinds of wings. So do you plan to offer also different kinds of wings? Yes, we have our basic standard wing, but we will come out with other wings. What most people are using the different wings for, they can, I guess, make them smaller because they're more sporty um, and they can carve them better. And that's for more advanced riders or they're making them bigger from their standard um, just because it actually, you would think it creates more drag being bigger, but actually it doesn't. It, it can give you more ride time um, and they're a little more stable, that bigger, the bigger the wing, so. And speaking about, uh, speaking about the learning of eFoil, it could be quite tricky for the newbies. And I saw that you started to use the tube to teach people. <laughs> yeah. So how was the tube and the eFoil? You know, it's just we're bringing forces together and it was just a concept uh, of my partner actually. Um, so we had the tube board, we have the foil. And so we were thinking, okay, we have the tube for training on the jet board let's let's throw it on for the foil and i mean you're talking about a a great move another innovation in the industry i haven't seen anybody do that yet but uh, you know when you have the tube on the training tube it's like training wheels for the board so it, it would it really helps um people learn confidence to get involved in the sport so um, if somebody's not that confident with the foil because it's more advanced riding uh for the foils there are typically than the jet board so it gives uh, extra edge of, uh, of confidence and stability so all right and let's cover the question that worries a lot of people in jet boarding uh, the safety of batteries you know there's been a yeah. lot of fires in the industry so i know you improved your battery comparing to the old version so tell me what was improved i know the battery became heavier but uh what was the difference well, we came out with a stainless steel fireproof vented box. So that's number one. Um, number two, just to ensure safety, we immerse all the cells in a fireproof gel. And so if there's that one in, I don't know, 10,000, whatever, whatever a cell failure may be, um, it, it can't domino, can't spread because it all the entire inside of the box. So it added weight to the battery um but safety obviously has to be number one we do not want to have any uh experience of any failure so it, it, we just it's totally prevention but so we could save weight but that it wasn't an option. yeah i see so. and we need to mention one of the main advantages of your board is it's basically almost silent comparing to other jet boards so yeah, how do yeah. you achieve it that, that's another part of the uh, concept of e-wave is we have a larger intake than most other boards. And so we can spin at a lower RPMs. We spin, we can spin at five to six RPMs. 
whereas most other competitors are spinning eight, eight, 9,000 RPMs. And so we have ceramic uh, bearings in there and spinning, we can get as much thrust with a lower RPM, which gives us almost a completely silent experience. Yeah, it's really important for those ideal German lakes where people really worry about the noise pollution as well. Yeah, 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 it just, uh, it really works well. When people see you riding, you know, you see them light up, but then they just keep watching. Okay, and also it's very important to cover the post-sale service and repairs. Like, what happens if something gets broke and what people should, should do? We have a one-year 100% replacement warranty uh, on our board. So our board is conceived to be modular, and so um, there's only maybe six parts on it until uh, the jet pump I'm calling one part. So if, if that were to fail, the motor or anything in it, we literally would replace the entire jet pump module. And uh, the handle, for example, is a digital handle. Uh, we've got a brains box in there and we have the battery. So there's not a whole lot of uh, components in there to fail. Um, we've tested and tested and ridden them as hard as we can. And, and uh, so it's been, it's been uh, road, road tested. And so we will just replace them if, if something fails. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's been amazing. So the, the last question for you is how do you see the future? You've been in this industry for like almost 10 years, probably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you've seen people starting with petrol, then some very heavy electric boards appeared. So how yeah. do you see this industry evolving in the next few years? Will they be like electric in the future or it's just not there yet? What do you think? Well, that's uh, me and E-Wave, uh, the team, they s were not happy with where the industry was at and where it was going or how fast it was developing. Um, we wanted the sport of motorized surfing to expand faster. And we had to get a um, easy to use level board on the market to consumers and, and have it affordable. So it's not just for the elite or the uh, you know the purists that can can really you know spend so much time and attention uh, with it. So we wanted to make a recreational board. So uh, we were the first to come out with this high performance, high quality recreational board under ten thousand. And um, so that was just because we weren't you know it's that uh, thing. If you're not happy with something, don't complain. Do something about it. That's what the team did. We we decided to do something about it. And so now we're here. We, the board we have is just the foundation of E-Wave. There's so many more variations that are gonna come out of this, um, that uh, this is just the core. Uh, we've developed it to not just have the foil, but there's going to be other exciting uh, accessories in a sense that are going to make this even even uh, more enjoyable for the, for the customer. So I see it, um, I'm glad that we're here. So. Uh, we've got the performance uh, of a jet board under 10,000. Uh, so it, we are there. We wanted the market to be. Um, but now the next step will be with other competitors um, competing for the space and trying to grow their brands and, and, and improve performance. And with battery technology naturally uh, increase, increasing is going to improve the experience and also bring pricing down. So the next step will be we've got the performance we want there's good electric boards on the market. And it's just with time, as we scale the industry, we can hopefully get it down to 5,000 for a very good high quality board. Maybe it won't be carbon fiber. I mean, maybe it will, it might be a different type of composite, but we see we can take what we have and eventually, you know, I don't know if it's three years, maybe five years, um, get, a, get the performance we're getting out of the board we have now and, and get it to a lower price, so but it's going to be probably five years to get there. All right. Another, yeah. <laughs> and with all the coronavirus and the lockdowns, it's been a lot of delay in production for most of the companies. So what's your plan about it? Are you actually shipping it or how will this season work for you? Yeah, we, uh, I have inventory in the warehouse right now. Uh, just about 30 minutes ago, I got off the phone with, uh, my shipping company. I've 
We've got another full container of boards coming for the warehouse. So we, we are ramped up, ready for, basically we're looking at a June 1 release of uh, society, hoping for uh, the summer to, uh, and water sport activities to, to start opening up. So we, we, we're geared up, we're ready to go. The factory's running, warehouse is, is almost full, soon to be full. And so we're, we're ready. All right, Dana, I hope people will get back to the water very soon. Yeah, it's been a yeah. while. They're starting around here, so it'll, it'll start growing. It'll, it, it, and people are tired of being cooped up, so they want to get out there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you for your time. It's been a very helpful interview. I hope people enjoy it and all your knowledge, and I wish you a successful season. All right, well, thank you, thank you. Appreciate it, Mike. All right, cheers. <laughs> Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye.